But here's the EOD unlock. How am I supposed to defend against this? Of boom, me. Six player free for all match on the map Arnor in Battle Formula of One on the page 2.22. And what makes this game so special is the fact that no player has a castle. You have a camp situation, which means all you can eat and all you can enter buffet. And you need to play this kind of very careful because your base is easily accessible for every opponent player. And we have a white Gondor, pink Isengard, green Isengard, the orange Mordor, the red Gondor, and last but not least, the orange Isengard player. So we have actually lots of Isengards. I count one, two, three Isen, one Mordor, and two Gondor. So this six player free for all doesn't include any Rohan faction, but it's fine. Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, it was it's a map which is kind of, you know, <laughs> I don't know what I should be thinking about this map. It's kind of too bright, which kind of hurts your eyes a little bit when you watch too much around this area. The Gondor player was creeping this area with his soldiers, got a level 2 soldier and get the creep too, no problem. The Isengard player in the meantime was also grabbing this one behind his camp and might also be creeping this one with his Urukai, okay? And pretty much the same situation also for the pink Isengard player at the bottom side. This Gondor is going also to creep. I mean, basically, uh, every player is given the chance to have one free settlement. And if you want to get the second one, you need to creep a goblin layer, which is the easiest and the weakest creep in the game. And you can creep this even with the Oryx. The Gondor player here will be trying to deny this from creeping. The Mother player, let's see who's going to get the last hit. And the orcs get the last hit. But remember, the soldiers are way stronger than orcs. So when the soldier is level 2 and the orc is level 2, the soldier is going to be still coming ahead. Even the orcs with level 2 get a new bonus, the black orc bonus, which will give them the chance to deal 15% more damage. But it's still not compensating the difference between soldier and orc. Soldier is just better. There is a troll layer. I mean, it looks like the outposts are being protected by troll layers. And we have a lot of outposts in this map. I see one, two, three four outposts now this map is not very symmetrical <laughs> and remember the golden rule in the free-for-all games that you are not allowed uh, to buy a second camp or castle that's not possible i mean you can it's possible but you shouldn't because you know people will dislike you for this the reason is simple because let's assume this isengard player is able to defeat this player here and he's buying this camp and he's fighting against mordor mordor now has to destroy this and this which is a long way to travel which makes the player with multiple castles or multiple camps pretty much unbeatable. Boromir is on the field, level 3, the captain of Gondor, fighting against Uruks just like in the films. And also, this Gondor player was losing a lot of momentum. Now, for Boromir might be in trouble here. Is there Lords anytime soon coming? Let me check. I mean, this map is too bright. Okay, Lords has been recruited. He's marching. Remember, the Uruks and the Uruk heroes are just too fast in this game. And Boromir can't disengage from this situation. Because Lourdes can catch up to you. Um, even if you can't, what you can do with Isengard is you can pick up the Palantir, Division of Palantir power point from your spellbook, which will grant also your heroes, including Lourdes, a burst of movement speed, which gives you pretty much a chance to catch up to every hero who is not mounted on a horse. So Lourdes will be able to chase everybody. Level 2 Soldier Battalion, Soldier Archer Battalion. And there comes the legendary moment. We already know this in the films, but will the result be the same though? The Sporomia is level 4, has the leadership unlocked. The archers will deal now 60% more damage, which is very important. And Boromir is dying though. He's dying. Will he die? Oh, he missed the healing. <laughs> okay. Alright. In the meantime, Lourdes was creeping this, which is good for Farad. Um, Lourdes leadership is very important for Leton. Because you pretty much, like, you need to understand that the leadership is much better than a buff from Warchant. Because if you can keep your heroes alive, you will have constantly more DPS, which, again, quality beats quantity in Beef Me 1. You having more leadership, you will be potentially able to win all the fights. This Condor is pretty much out of the game. He has lost Boromir, he needs to revive him for 1200. But also, the level 4 Boromir needs around 2 minutes. Not around, it's exactly 2 minutes to be revived. So, 2 minutes is a long time, as RTS games are about speed and tempo. The white Gondor player at the bottom right side, also going for the combos. And he also has Faramir and Boromir under his control. Boromir is actually almost level 6 and Faramir only level 4. So what you are looking for when you want to go for the combos with the Gondor faction in a 
free for all game or in a team game, you want to get your heroes, the captains of Gondor, Faramir and Boromir to their levels in which they unlock their leadership bonuses. For Faramir it's level 5 for more armor leadership and for Boromir it's level 4 for more damage leadership. So the brothers in arms are kind of kind of like having a very good synergy with each other. One is making you tankier, the other one is getting you, you know, giving you more damage boost to kill stuff faster. In this case, we are, you know, talking about a Mordor. Mordor has trolls and your armor leadership doesn't really do too much against trolls because they will one shot you anyway. What you need against trolls are definitely, uh, is definitely the damage leadership because you want to burst them before they can make it to you. In the meantime, with a small fight here, the Green Isinger player was able to capture the settlement. Three furnaces, getting good eco. Armory upon the field. He already purchased the heavy armor. And he's gonna make some combos. Level 2 combo, level 1 combo. And his Lourdes from Green Isengard is actually level 4. But he's, you know, very, very uh, close to get the level 5 leadership unlocked. Which again, will make the fight here big time in his favor. So what you want to do, guys, is when you find yourself in a situation like this, you want to put your Lords inside your combos so you can share experience and get level 5 way faster this way. Look at this. And this Isengard has to now pretty much run for his life. He's going for Lourdes, but it's going to be only a level 1 Lourdes. And again, Lourdes is a hero in free-for-all games you want to recruit early game so you can get them level 5 way easier. Because killing Uruks or any other unit without upgrades is way easier. But in the mid to lead game, your opponent will have heavy armor, which kind of makes your Lourdes not a very strong hero anymore. The combo has been slaughtered, pretty much. Let's see if this push is going to be enough, because his leadership in the pink Isengard player, Nazgi, doesn't have it. Okay, in the meantime, Archer range level 2, Fire all purchased, Outpost captured, Rangers on the field, combos, one of them is going to be placed inside the Outpost, Boromir level 5 has Dawn of Gondor, and Faramir almost level 5 too. The yellow Isengard player is going for combos too, of course. Um, and this Isengard is about to be defeated. So now, what you need to understand is, when you play free for all game, you want to kind of be included in many, many fights, you know, to get to power points, to get your power points collected. Because in the late game, evil factions have the chance to get the Balrog, which again is definitely able to destroy a whole camp. And remember, that's a camp map, right? It's not a castle map. So one Balrog all alone can definitely destroy a whole player, player's camp. For that reason, outpost control is essential in the mid to lead game. Because there is nothing you can do about a Balrog who's going to destroy your whole camp. So if you want to don't be defeated, you need to at least control one outpost. So the red condom is moving now to the yellow Isengard player. And he has two combos here, Lourdes, almost level 5. But would you look at this, Mordor rotating in the meantime to the Red Gondor. It's a sandwich situation. Now Gondor has to disengage and get back to his castle. He doesn't even have heavy armor yet, okay? Oh, the trolls are hitting like a truck, man. Only one drama troll, two combos. This Mordor is very strong. The only thing he doesn't have is the Witch King. So he has only drama troll leadership because I will go off very, very soon. And that means he has only 50% more damage and armor. But this Gondor has also Boromir leadership. Let's see if he can defend this. You'll find out. Oh, the trolls, they are going ham. They are stunned. I mean, the level 3 is not stunned, but level 2 is getting stunned. Boromir is being a tanky boy. Knock them on the ground, Boromir. Yes, he does. But he's getting knocked down himself. Trolls are a mean one. But trolls are wasting time trying to kill Boromir. In the meantime, Rangers and Faramir. Faramir is revenging his brother and cleaning all the trolls and will be able to defend the stack. That's pretty good. Oh, but in the meantime, the green Isengard player Farad was able to dis destroy and fully defeat the other Isengard player Nazgi. The pink Isengard player is the first player who gets defeated in this game. And Gondor was trying to make it to the spot, but maybe he got sandwiched. I, I missed what happened. Maybe he was getting attacked from this top side from Isen and bottom side from Gondor. Again, keep in mind that you are not allowed to buy a second camp, okay? That's against the rules. It's like a gentleman's agreement. You can't, you shouldn't. You must not do this. Okay. Rohirrim summon. And land will be covered. So it's a good situation, right? Because the rangers here, they will hit non-stop. The statue is buffing them. So Isengard will be covering the land from, from the Gondor player. But there comes the reinforcement. So the plan is to keep this outpost, outpost protected. 
Lourdes is going to be, you know, very, very important to be killed. Remember, Boromir has been killed before, so Boromir has to be revived. He's level 5, so it's going to take you some time. Two minutes. Oh! Focus him. Boom, boom. The ranger damage, dude. Holy moly. The rangers, they are the... Uh, they have, like, the highest uh, DPS as Archer. DPS because... Oh, there comes Saruman, though. Oof. Boom, son. Okay, now you need to run. Not even heavy armor on the soldier units. Can you imagine this? Not even heavy armor. Can I click on them? He doesn't even have heavy armor, yes. He's poor. Okay. In the meantime, this mortar is recovering, but still doesn't have the money for the Witch King, which is essential. You want to have Witch King on the field? Because Witch King has the best leadership. The strongest leadership. 50-50 damage in armor, but also gives you debuff, which means the enemy units losing 15% of their armor. Which basically means you automatically deal 15% more damage, okay? Okay, Boromi is back in the business. Outpost was saved. The Isengard, this one is looking very, very strong. He has also Saruman, I believe, on the field. Let me check if he has Saruman or not. Yeah, he has Saruman somewhere. Now, there comes Saruman, Fireball. And this Condor can only run. Okay, so let's take a look into the current power point, shall we? Um, we have David. This is the white Condor player at the bottom right side. He just has three power points, but two of them has to be invested into the Gan of the White, because he has only Gan of the Grey on the field. And he's peeling. He has a level 5 combo, which is pretty powerful, and Boromir leadership, but I think Faramir has been just killed, who was also level 5, okay? And Matthews, the Mordor player, top left side, has one power point of the Industry. Farad, the Green Isengard player, has actually Lanked, Industry, Palantir, and Warchant. And he has even two power points on top of that. Now that's going to be a big fight here. That's going to be a very important fight. Let's see. He has no rain yet. And there is no statue. Ganaf is diving in too deep. He's looking for opportunity. What a blast. Boom. But where is the cripple at? Where is the cripple at? It never... He had cripple. Oh, he had cripple on cooldown. That's what happened. But Ganaf is still diving in too deep. This map is just too bright. There comes the warm tongue ability. He will be able to steal most of them. But Ganaf is in chan 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 chan. And he's gonna be dead in a second. There is just too much DPS, too much damage power. You can't do this. You wanna blast and get away. Because even if cripple is on cooldown, the combos focusing you down will hurt you. Lourdes has been killed though in exchange. That's pretty good. Power points are rising to the sky. This Isengard player has now the chance to get to freezing rain. In the meantime, we have a fight between Gondor and Mordor topside. This Isengard is kind of sandwiching the other Gondor player from the opposite direction. And now the outpost, the only outpost from the White Gondor player will be destroyed and fully taken down. The Gondor didn't only lose his outpost, boys. He lost pretty much everything that he had, including combos and all his heroes. Boromir killed, Faramir killed, Gandalf killed. And his eco, by all means, isn't looking that great. He has only 900 around about a thousand resources in the bank which is not enough now with this combo um, this condor coming to this outpost from the yellow isengard player the mortal player top is still preparing himself he has like a massive troll army you know getting even more trolls recruited drummer troll but again without witch king and darkness it's gonna be still quite difficult money is tuned down in the patch 2.22 version 3.0 so you can't keep recruiting trolls make you know orc arches and still have the money to Spare for the Witch King, you need to choose one of one or the other, you know? Okay? But this army is also looking pretty, pretty strong. But Isengard army is like, what, level 5 combos? Dude, <laughs> level 4 combos, Lourdes and Saruman will be revived. And the most scary part, uh, part about the situation is he has the Freezing Rain ability available. Which, of course, counters pretty much all the existence from Mordor. And from all the players, Isengard and also this Condor. Okay, level 5. He has also 1, 2, 3, 4 combos around this location. There comes the war chant on the army. But Gondor will ignore this and go for the attack. This combo, he doesn't stand a chance. There is just too much leadership. How close is this player to Raindor? Let me check. He is kind of far away still. He has 3 power points after the Tainted Land. So he still needs around about 4 power points before he can get to the Freezing Rain, which is an ultimate counter to all the leadership bonuses. Oh, Hiram Summon are actually doing a good job, kind of keeping the Isengard player busy, because the plan, I think, is to deny him to come to this location, and so this Gondor player can keep pushing. He will cover the land from his opponent, and will keep going forward. Again, the more you participate in fights, the more power points you will be able to raise, and then the ultimate summons like Baldrock and Yuti are gonna be the game-deciding moments of the game. It's a snowball game, and, you know, again, 
which rewards the player who is contributing more into fighting. The Mordor is now has not the Witch King on the field and he is preparing to go ham boys. Two combos, two drummer trolls, bunch of trolls. That's gonna be rough to fight against. And his target is not the Isengard play at the bottom left, which by the way could be a great target because he has literally nothing in his castle, nothing in his camp. And you can use this pathway to walk, by the way. That's possible. So the Mordor player could definitely sneak in from this area to attack this only camp from Isengard play Farad, who is looking extremely strong. Now, this green Isengard player is rotating to the white Gondor player, and the red Gondor player is rotating to the yellow Isengard player, but at the same time, the orange Mordor player is coming to the red Gondor player top side. He's gonna be able to destroy this outpost first. The Gondor player keeps moving, he's gonna summon the Eagles. The Eagles are now gonna be sent to the outpost to deal with the trolls. But keep in mind that there are two combos which are definitely able to one-shot these Eagles. With the leadership of the Witch King and the Drummer Troll, they will deal 100% more damage, which is way too, way too strong. And the Trolls are even so tanky, not even Eagles can hurt them. But in the meantime, this Isengard play will be fully, fully destroyed. He also lost his Saruman in Lourdes, 9 power points in the bank for um, Gisu. He doesn't even use the Freezing Rain because there is no point as you have no army anyway, right? You have no army to fight with when you deny the leadership from your opponent so rain is not gonna do too much but he's not defeated yet so you can what you can do you can always recapture your own camp so when you lose for whatever reason your camp you are of course able and allowed to recapture this david has been defeated in the meantime by farad <laughs> this army is looking look at this army from isengard dude one two three four five six combos what can men do against such a reckless seat okay He's going to be able to recapture this indeed. Okay, Gizu is still in the game, but he's kind of poor. Uh oh. Okay. Oh, this guy has kind of the gray. Chunking, chunking, chunking. Will the Witch King die though? That's the question. That's a huge troll army. There comes the Lightning Sword. He can't use the Easter Light. But he has the EOD unlocked, and the EOD will be used to kill all these trolls inside the camp. And the camp, Gondor, must stand. As Boromir would like to see in the camp from Gondor won't be defeated just yet, okay? Alright, so Mordor player has collected round about 5 power points after the industry, so he still needs 2 power points for his darkness, but he just lost the majority of his army. The Witch King has to be revived, which luckily costs you nothing but time, costs you round about 3 minutes to get him back in the business. Gandalf is now white, has now access to the Easter Light, but the Green Isinger player, Farad doesn't want to stop. He has 3 power points in the bank after the Freezing Rain, but he has an army and a half, and this army is definitely able to roll off over, over everything. The problem is, the EOD is on cooldown, so if he, may, if he manages to get to the red Gondor player, he will, you know, <laughs> roll him, because EOD and Palrock, they have like an incredible long cooldown in this game, around about 8 minutes and a half. So, there is definitely a cooldown window in which you can punish your opponent when you know his EOD or his Palrock is on cooldown. Now, this Isengard army is looking extremely powerful. <laughs> Look at this. I mean, he has too much. Look, he's controlling the whole bottom area of this map. He has, like, two outposts. Um, actually, he has three outposts under his control. Bunch of settlements around. Money for Farad, as you can see and tell. It's not a big problem. Lourdes will be crippled and will be getting one-shotted. He doesn't stand a chance. In the meantime, the red corner player is preparing to attack the orange mortar player because he knows which king is dead and again, you need to punish. There is always like a cooldown window in which you need to achieve something, right? And I don't think this base can withstand this Isengard army power. That's legit not possible. They are holding the freezing green. There is no need to use it. And the camp will take maybe 20 more seconds, but it won't last any longer. In the meantime, the Gondor is rotating to the Mordor, who has also now a mover kill pen upon the field. But map control is very important. 1000 for Isengard and 200 for Gondor, so how much does Mordor have? Also not much. So the Isengard is definitely wealthier compared to all the other players together collected. So, But he can't use the money for anything, right? Like he has almost full population, he can't re you know, really recruit more units at this point. Okay, we have a Ranger army, Faramir, Boromir and Gandalf. Bunch of trolls, but without Witch King leadership, I don't think they can last for a, for a long time. Because the rangers are also highly leveled now. There's a level 10 combo. Which, of course, hitting like a truck. There comes the Rohirrim special summon. Trolls are charging in. But can they achieve something? The answer is no. They will get slaughtered. Pretty much. There comes the Wizard Blast. Boom, son. 
kind of screaming. But the problem is going to be now, who is going to deal with this Isengard army from Farad? This army is looking incredibly strong, incredibly strong. And if that's not enough, he has also <laughs> the, the Freezing Rain to make your army incredible weak. Mordor is going to demolish everything and it's going to be the end of the orange Mordor player Matthews. Now it's going to turn from a 6 player free for all, like always, into a 1v1 and allow me to introduce you now the final player. This one is, this one is me, by the way, guys. This one is me. So I'm playing a free for all here. I didn't want to say that at the beginning of the game because I like to keep it entertaining. There comes the Gandalf, almost level six and a half. The army is incredible strong, by the way, by the way, guys. At this point, when I'm playing, right, I'm like, oh my goodness, how am I supposed to defend against this? How am I supposed to defend? Because my AOD is on such a long cooldown. It's not, it's just barely halfway up, okay? It needs another three minutes and a half to be back up okay so he's going inside the base so i know i have to go for a blast i know that i'm summoning everything unfortunately my rohirrim summon is on cooldown so i'm summoning the eagles trying to kill saruman and sacrificing my gandalf to go for a juicy visa blast that's a beautiful hit in the meantime my isengard opponent is getting more and more power points collected there comes the freezing rain which means all my leadership bonuses are completely gone so i'm trying to beat his tainted line so i can get my leadership back but I, in reality, I need to disengage from this location because his army is shining bright like a diamond and my army doesn't, okay? So, and unfortunately, I wasn't even able to kill his Saruman or his lords. And in the meantime, please take a look into the minimap, okay? The minimap is looking incredibly well for Green Isengard player. He has pretty much whole map and can do whatever he wants. He has multiple level 3 furnaces, War Pit now also up on the field, getting Warks recruited. And my last remaining... Uh, settlement which kind of keeps me still in the game is this outpost and a couple of archers against a whole unleashed isengard army with two of the most powerful heroes in bunch of level 10 units and here's 12 power points my eod is still on a long cooldown i want you to keep that in mind okay now i regain my leadership because there is a land so when you step on the enemy land and you leave the land you will get your leadership back okay that's when you, that's why when you play isengard you shouldn't play with the land, land too much because it's like a double-edged sword okay he's gonna use his land also so i need to build fight around this area in which i have more leadership i farami me, borrow me a gandalf my gandalf is level seven and you can see with the statue that's why he needs to destroy the well in the statue asap that's what he needs to do power points are rising to the sky 14 power points for isengard the works are coming in beautiful fireball but he will insta get killed there comes cloud break but the units are too highly leveled, they are fear resistant, they are immune. But there comes the Gandalf. Boom! Mifrandia, the White Rider. He's gonna die, but I had to do this. If I didn't have, if I wouldn't do this, he would just kill. Because look how much I have left. I have like not many units left on the field. Lourdes is kind of going on a suicide mission. And Isengard is disengaging because from losing all these units and killing my Gandalf, he actually got enough power points for the Baldrog summon, okay? And there comes the demon of the ancient world, boys, okay? So I have an outpost remaining, right? And I'm summoning my Rohirrim. So if I lose this outpost, it's over, right? It's it's over. I can't win the game anymore. So I know what I need, what I need to do. I have enough money to rebuy my camp. I'm trying to make it here. I'm rebuilding in the last possible second. This dude is trying to finish it off and I'm sprinting to the camp and buying this. So if the Baldrog and when the Baldrog destroys this camp, I will still not be defeated. So the Baldrog has now a little bit of time left. He can keep running. So I need to fill up my bees because there is there are still level 10 units inside my camp. I need to deal with them somehow. That's why I brought also my Farami to this location because my Farami can give leadership, right? Make them tankier, but I don't want to lose them either. So I'm going to disengage. Okay, there comes uh, this dude, but he has not much time left. He can use the wings one more time. And by the time he will land here, he will be gone. Now, look, look my money, 1,500, zero out of 200 available, 250 available command points versus Isengard with 32,000 plus resources in the bank, okay? He can easily revive all the heroes, but, but he lost. I can't do this. I can't, I don't have the money to revive my Gandalf. I have zero units. But luckily, I have the EOD, which can buy me a bit more time. So time is a luxury. I have zero outpost control. He has all the outposts under his control. The only unit <laughs> that I can offer is, you know, Faramir. And he has definitely the chance to show his quality in this game. 
Now he has even War Riders upon the field, so he's gonna try to make me even, you know, <laughs> lose more map control, make me stay poor, as I'm about to lose my remaining farms. And I have only three of them remaining under my control. One, two, and three. So I need more time, so I need to make Boromir. Boromir is an essential hero in this situation, because again, that's the only way I can get leadership back, damage leadership back, which I need to kill heroes like Lourdes and Saruman fast enough. Because when you, when you, you, know, when you fight against you know, Saruman and he warm tongues you, he won't be able to move for like 3 seconds. And in this period of time, we need to burst them down. Otherwise, he can win the game solo, single-handedly. Okay, I'm summoning to deal with this Vorks. Isengard can make Siege Vorks here, of course. <laughs> Uruk Pit, Vork Pit. I mean, he has so much money, he can do whatever he wants. He has now multiple production buildings, by the way. He has also Warp Pit and Uruk Pit in the base, of course. He has whole map besides these two settlements here and these two settlements here. But it's also about to be changed. He's now sending everything forward. So I know uh, he has Rain also available. With Rain, I can't fight him. So I know I need to use EOD now to fight this, okay? I don't want to lose my combos. I can barely upgrade them with heavy armor and uh, fire arrows. And he's smart to disengage. He's running for his life. He's gonna even Palantir, but his Lord has been still killed. Which is good, because Lourdes' level, at this point of the game, is level 7, and you still need to wait 2 minutes to get him back in the business. 2 minutes, again, is a long time, and give me the chance to make at least 3 more combos, you know? Boromir is back in the business, so I know, like, here, at this point, I realize, okay, I'm against the time. So if I wait here, what will happen is, he will have the Balrog summon available again, he will summon the Balrog and finish me off. It's, I'm summoning, uh, using the Horn of Condor to stun the Vorks. I don't know what's happening with them there. <laughs> They're like moonwalking. Watched Michael Jackson before. Uh, I can not cover, I covered this land. So I have more leadership. There comes Cloud Break for a second stun. So I'm kind of keeping them checked. My, my point here, what I'm trying to do is try to get as much experience points as I potentially can on my units to get them higher leveled. And also Boromir offers me the pillage, the glory of Condor, Gondor. And I need every single resource I can somehow get, okay? Because I cannot e even revive my Ganav boys. Can you imagine this? Look my money. I have zero map control. I cannot afford to revive my Ganav. But I have a tower guard here. The good thing about the Gondor camp is, as you can see, that you can block this only entrance of the Gondor camp with a tower guard. That means if you would kind of dare to attack me with like war riders, they need to go through my porcupine formation tower guards and that would be a disaster. Now Isengard is rotating. I know Freezing Rain is on cooldown. I'm gonna summon the Rohirrim. Again, Gondor is the best summons. Four of Eolingas, as Theodium would like to see. Now it's a big fight. Big fiesta. Big, big fight. So Isengard is trying to rotate. That is Saruman. But I also have the Eagles. The second I see Saruman, I know, okay, I need to summon the Eagles. I want to kill the Saruman. That's exactly what I'm trying to do. Saruman is level 8, so he will have a, like, like a really long revive time. Again, it's all about having cooldown windows. Because there is not a fight what I need to win to win this game. I need to win multiple battles until I can make it to his castle. I still need to go through many, many different outposts, which is way easier said than done. The power points, you, you, we have already everything unlocked from the spellbook. We cannot unlock anything else. So my plan is to get this outpost control before the Balrog is going to be available for the second time, which, by the way, is almost available. A quarter, like a two minute away. So I need to hurry up, okay? Time matters a lot. We also need to, I know at this point, I also need to make sure about, uh, make something about the map control. I know this, right? I know my money is a big problem because he has 15,000, I have 2,000. Um, so I don't want to wait here with my combos. I'm going to use my Rohirrim to recapture this, okay? So I'm going to straight up move to the second outpost because I know Saruman is dead. Uh, when he's level 8 or 10, uh, eight, between 8 and 10, he will have 3 minutes revive time. So I know this is the time for me to shine. This is the time for me to achieve something. I know his reign is on cooldown and his Saruman has been killed. Again, the cooldown windows, important to be committed on, okay? But Isengard has two war riders here. He was kind of hiding them. But it looks like they won't be able to achieve too much because of the positioning of the tower guards. I think they are able to see my rangers. So I need to rotate now with my tower guards to protect my rangers because... They cost a lot of money. They cost 600 plus 420 for the fire arrows. So they cost me more than a thousand. Outpost destroyed. Again, not waste any time. Keep moving forward. Plan is to destroy them one by one and kind of give, uh, force my opponent to to a choice with the Balrog summon because his Balrog summon available in about 10 seconds from now. Okay, maybe 20 seconds. 
So he's coming with the war guiders to this location. Making a steeple. Because I know I need some calf for the map control. I need mobility. I'm gonna summon the rangers as he crippled my bottom here. My four Gondor abilities on cooldown. I'm gonna use the horn of Gondor for the stun. He has Palantir, which he can use to give fear resistance. I'm gonna use heal. And I'm spamming this. Now, the Forgotten ability has been, you know, activated, which makes my units also deal 60% more damage. Boromir is getting chunked, but that comes to Balrog for the second time. He's gonna insta kill my tower guards protecting the White City. And again, there is nothing I can do to stop him from destroying my camp. There is nothing beside Gandalf who can fight against Balrog, but even Gandalf can get whipped one time when you are trying to kill Gandalf, you know, Balrog in a one on one situation. But luckily, I'm able to win this fight because I killed his lords. He has no leadership beside Warchant. I have simply more leadership, higher level units, level 7, level 7. Rangers are dealing constant damage from the statue behind, getting bonus. And even though, yes, he will be able to destroy my camp, but I have still two outposts remaining under my control. That's the essential part. That's what's important. In order to fight against Balrog, when you have a camp, you need outpost control. You need this. Otherwise, the Balrog is easily able to win the game solo by himself, okay? So now, I know the Balrog is on cooldown. I know I killed Durts, and I know my EOD is going to be available way sooner compared to his Balrog. Again, cooldown window, very important. I don't want to be annoying with this statement, but it's just the fact. It's true, okay? I'm going to summon the Rohirrim here, actually. And now you might be asking yourself, why are you summoning the Rohirrim here? Because for of map control. I need map control. Because I have no money to even rebuy my camp. That's how poor I am. So I need to make sure to destroy the enemy settlements. It's like a win-win situation because I will end up getting more money and my opponent will get less money, okay? I mean, it's still not going to hurt him that much because he has still over 18,000 resources. And he's easily able to recreate all the units he's making, making even Uruks with plates and heavy armor because they are way more mobile, making more combos. Saruman is back in the business. Lords almost back up. And my camp is still down. Okay, I will be able to get this under my control now. That's pretty important. And you see, when you, uh, you know, basically when you capture or control the outpost, you want to put rangers inside of the outpost so you have some sort of self-defense. I'm going to use Cloudbreak uh, to stun the Uruks, destroying my, trying to destroy my outpost. The Rohirrim will trample them, no problemo. And they will handle the situation like a big boy. He's going to be able to destroy my well. But at this point, um, normally you would demolish these buildings to deny power points. But at this point, we know the opponent player has the Balrog. There is no need to deny any more... Uh, when he has already all the power points unlocked, right? Okay? So my Gandalf, I can't, believe it or not, I still can't afford to revive my Gandalf because my prioritize, I'm pri prioritizing this camp. I know I need the camp first. Saruman is diving in, getting chung, 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 warming, warming arrow, and, 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 he's dead. That's how powerful your level 7 combos are. Same as Faramir with level 10. I'm gonna summon the EOD because I know his Balrog is on cooldown. And Lourdes has to run for his life. He's sprinting, by the way. You can see this white glow animation. Trying to make it out. I could if I wanted to use my eagles to kill him. But I'm not going to waste my eagles just for one Lourdes. So my plan is to move on to destroy this outpost. So as you can see. Yeah. We basically have no. <laughs> say it. We basically have no uh, camp. But we have one, two, three outposts. And we are about to get the last outpost on this map too. With these two combos. Isengard has eventually the Freezing Rain. Yes, he does. And he has also 17 power points. He could if he wanted to go also for the Devastation. Uh, but, uh, you know, he doesn't need the money. He has more than enough money. Saruman needs to be revived one more time. My Eagles were able to defend this. It's pretty good. And my Hobbit is going now to this area. So I can recapture my <laughs> camp for the, for the third time. Okay. Alright. In the meantime, the Outpost is quite tanky. With level 3 furnaces, but not tanky enough. My combos are just hitting like a truck. Dude, I like the free-for-all games because, you know, most people would give up. But, you know, never give up, never surrender, you know? Always, there is always hope. Unfortunately, there is no Gandalf. That's the problem. And I can't, it, I don't even have the money to fill up my base. But, you know, at this point of the game, I have more map control compared to what was looking like, like, five minutes ago. So I know at some point I need still to make a steeple. And with this steeple, I need to recruit Gondor Knights. And with the Gondor Knights, I need to capture all these settlements because my opponent is still getting too much money while I'm getting almost no money. But I, you know, it's looking better. We have one, two, three, four, five farms outside. 
which is pretty nice. Three farms here, eight farms, um, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So we have thirteen plus resource buildings, which could be, of course, way better, but also way worse. Four Erlingas, the Rohirrim summon. That's the that's the downside when you are making the Uruks, you know, with, without pikemen or without combos, the crossbowmen, because they are very vulnerable against trample. He's gonna use the Rain. I'm gonna summon the Rangers and use the Four Gondor. If you don't know, uh, the Rain is only affecting the current army, what is currently on the field. So if you summon the Rangers after the Rain has been used, you will gain your leadership back. I need to step aside from the land. He has just too much leadership at this point. I still have no leadership on my main army. And the, my farm got crippled, trying to show his quality. Balrog is almost back up for the third time in this game. And my Poromir is level 10. So Faramir, I might not be able to save him. But luckily Lourdes never draw the sword and go into the carnage mode. Maybe he shouldn't because, you know, my, my combos are still level 10. So they should be very, very strong. Lourdes is diving in a little bit too deep. Might get killed, 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 killed. But he's sprinting with the Palantium. In the meantime, I have a full base with marketplace it's the first time i can afford to go for a marketplace i know okay you know what in order to be not that poor anymore in order to be able to finally revive my revive my gandalf i need to you know i have to build the marketplace so it's gonna kind of make my money not look very good at this point but it's gonna be a good investment into the into the latest stages of the game oh my he's gonna use the will of saruman he's gonna get in, in safety I'm trying to save my level 10 units here, but remember these Uruks are faster compared to my combos. They are actually not, because Boromir, if you don't know, also gives you the leadership, this one, gives you more movement speed for your combos, for your, for your you know, infantry units. So you can outrun the Uruk combina combinations, but you can't outrun um, the Uruks or crossbowmen solo. Okay, so my command points are not looking good, but I'm finally able to revive my Ganov for the first time after I lost them. I built up the steeple, and I know my opponent is very close to Balrog. Here's Balrog available indeed. Now here's the pushing power here. Here's an army, three combos, three Uruks, Lords, and Saruman. My EOD is on cooldown, and my army is being chunked big time, okay? So you can now push from this location. My units here around the outpost can't really do much. He's going to use Warchan on them. Fireball is going to be enough to one-shot them. And once the combos arrive, I can't really hold this. Every power point from me is on cooldown, so there is nothing I can do. And Lourdes is going to ignore this and go to the other outpost. Because the plan, as you can eventually think yourself from Farad, is... Okay, I need to destroy his remaining outpost. Then I can summon my Balrog inside the piece and finish off the game. That's the plan. So he will indeed be able to destroy this one first, this one first, this one second, this one third. And now all he has to do is destroy my last remaining outpost and the camp with his Balrog. Okay? I can't even contribute into fighting because my army is still badly damaged. So my, my hit is on cooldown. But my heroes are full HP. That's, you know, very good. The problem is, as you can see, we have only two archers remaining from the combo battalion. Also here for, the, for this combination. So my firepower is not very strong. But I know I can't wait any time. I can't waste any time. So my plan is to get to this outpost, to destroy this outpost, so I can capture this before my opponent destroys this and this. But luckily, he was not paying attention to his Balrog. And because he was paying attention to this area and to this camp. To this outpost because as you can see he's trying to build stuff to de deny me from buying this anytime soon right but i will just go for the citadel Balrog couldn't finish it i'm gonna try to rebuild this my rohirrim summoner is available i will summon it to deal with the uruks my outpost here is about to be destroyed what keeps me alive is this one blacksmith in the building up um <laughs> citadel so i will capture this now luckily i have enough money now because of the market please and also my Ganov couldn't get on the wheel, so I got all the money back from the investment. I have two combos. <laughs> two combos. Lourdes, uh, not Lourdes. Faramir and Boromir. That's all I have against the whole map. But I was able to save my outpost for now. Eagles are available, so I can use it for the worst case scenario. But the, of course, I don't want to use my Eagles for the, for the Uruks. But if you have to, then you gotta do what you gotta do, you know? Okay. He's coming for my outpost. I will be stunning them now with my Horn of Condor. You shall not move. Okay. Now they are stunned. And I know my EOD is almost available. So here, I'm a bit more relaxed. But I know my map control is not looking good. So I have to build this table. I was trying to build this table here around the outpost. But he came with Lourdes and destroyed it. 
So I need to summon the eagles here. Use the land, I covered the land. But I lost pretty much all my units. But luckily, again, what makes Gondor very strong in the mid to lead game is the fact that you have the chance to have multiple summons. There comes the Freezing Rain, and I see him rotating. But I, luckily, I have AOD available, which can again kill me, kill this army, and buy me some more time. So he's smart, and he's rich also, you know. Not that rich anymore, though. Remember, at some point, he had like 35,000. I'm gonna summon the AOD. He's gonna use Palantir to get more movement speed on his heroes. Try, you know, very smart move here, running into different directions. As you can see, we nerfed the EOD. Now it summons one battalion less. It used to suppose, uh, summon six battalions. Now it only summons five. We also nerfed Balrog multiple times. They are still very powerful and, in my opinion, very broken. But, you know, they are designed like this. Sometimes you are stuck in a loop situation in the game in which you need EOD or in which you need Balrog to progress. This Saruman is running wild, actually. Running into in circles. He has a Uruk pit here. I will be able to recapture this, but I lost one of my level 10 combos, which of course is quite painful. Okay, so... Ganov, incredible long revive time when he's level 8. He has like 3 minutes revive time, which is a long time. Okay. That's a... That's a beautiful fireball. He killed a whole, com whole horse battalion, plus more than that. Again, money is still not looking good for me. I have less than a thousand. I made for double stable, which was potentially a mistake. Because I thought I can if afford it with like one, two, three, four, five farms outside, but I just can't. I need more farms, okay? So I know that's the main reason why I'm making this. I make archery in here because I also need firepower. Because if you if you only go for the Gondor Knights, you can just make pikemen and counter this. So we need like a mix at this point. Like infantry to fight against his army and heroes, and cavalry for the trample situation, but also for the map control. Luckily, this level 3 farm with the marketplace gives me actually a great chunk of money 29, which is pretty nice level 9 Saruman, so I have to some way deal with this. And what is the best way of dealing with a white wizard? You have a few seconds time to answer this question in the comment section down below. My combos are rotating to this outpost. I, okay, I won't let you wait anymore. What is the best way of dealing with a white wizard? True. It's gonna be your own white wizard. It's about time, Gandalf. It's about time. We missed you. You have been on exile for a long time. I'm trying to make combos uh, horses here. And... Uh, Again, the golden rule, I know he has only one camp. He knows I have only one camp. But we also know that we have multiple outposts to get through first before we can go for the victory. My Ganav is almost in the business. I'm going to summon the Rohirrim. Rohirrim summon has actually been such a good summon here in this game for me. He will be Ill, only able to steal one of them. There comes the Warchant. But my Ganav is coming. Nimifrandi, the White Rider. Boom, son. Okay, now I can chunk him with the Easter Light. He's gonna fireball me. I'm gonna Easter him, but he healed him with the Will of Saruman. I like this Will of Saruman ability actually. It kind of gives you the chance to play like to go for like risky moves, which you would never dare to do in the previous versions. Because Saruman is he is like a very squishy hero, and you know you get pretty much chunked from everything, and now you can feel a bit more confident and take a bit more risky fights. You know, he's bringing the pikeman to this spot as well. I have like lots of horses here. I, I, I'm down to fight this. He was not switching them into porcupine formation. And I want to blast this pikeman. That's very important. I'm gonna blast them. Boom. They get one shot, of course. Can I fit in like a truck? My Ganav is almost level 9, by the way. So I'm trying to get him the last hit. So I can get him to level 10. Because look what's coming from this location. I have not much remaining here, but he has three combos with Lourdes. While I'm rotating to this outpost to take control of this, I'm gonna use them. See it, uh, Cloudbreak to stun them for a few seconds because I'm trying to buy some time, okay? My base is looking good and I'm about to destroy this outpost, right? I'm trying to now come to this location. I know he's lured, but I have a surprise for him. I have a big surprise for him. I mean, it's not EOD. What can it be? No EOD, no Eagles, no Rohirrim. What kind of surprise can I have for him? Oh yeah, I forgot about the White Rider. <laughs> Look his level. Yeah, you can cripple me all you want, Lourdes, but I wiped out your army anyway. Take the Easter on your face, son. Level 10 Gandalf is not here to joke around. Hitting very hard and finishing off the Uruk hero, Lourdes. But he is smart. He crippled my Gandalf and, you know, summoned the Balrog on top of my Gandalf. And Gan <laughs> Balrog <laughs> has been able to revenge. <laughs> Dude... Look, I can again not afford him. 
I can't, I'm still poor, so I, that's gonna take me a long time to actually get Gandalf back in the business. He's gonna be able to destroy this, Balrog has time, he can also keep flying all the time, right? He can use, the wings have almost no cooldown, so you can actually kind of fly in rotation, and when you place your breath fire in a decent way, you can definitely one-shot a whole outpost, right? It's quite easy. All you need to do is wait for the 25 seconds. You can use breath fire only twice, though. You can use it three times, so you need to be kind of smart about how to invent use it. But if you use it like this, you can, as you can see, he destroyed like two outposts and killed my Ganov. And he has still time to wipe, whip one more time or to kill one or two more structures with the auto tags. But I was able to recapture this. However, I can't hold this. Uh, I don't want to summon my eagles to kill one combo either. So I'm going to give up this area. Because my, I'm, I'm kind of happy from this situation. Yeah, you might say, but how are you happy? You lost your Ganna to two outposts. But I'm still kind of happy that I didn't lose my camp for one more time. Because when you lose camp, your buildings need ages to get to level 2 and level 3 again. Which is the main reason why I'm so poor. Okay, I'm rotating now from the top side. My loot, my, I keep saying loot, but it's not loot. Faramir and Boromir in one level 10 combo. But I have also a couple of horses. One, two, three knights, okay? Knights of Gondor. We full upgrades, by the way. Okay, we have shields. Heavy armor in Forge Bleeds. And we have also double leadership for Faramir and Boromir. Very, very, very good. And I still can't afford Ganov. So I know he has regained the map control. He has still three outposts under his control. But for the first time ever in this game, I want to actually make it to his own camp. Okay? His camp is, has been untouched since the beginning of the game. And I want to change this. Again, cooldown windows are important. He just used the Balrog. It's on cooldown for the next seven minutes. And my AOD is about... Available in about a minute. Every second matters. My eagles are available, and he has no combos here. That's why you need combos, because how you wanna deal with my eagles? Your Saruman can only fire both one of them, but I have two eagles, and eagles are hard countering heroes too. So I'm gonna use my Pippin to kind of try to get map control <laughs> at some point. Need to make more knights, and I gotta, I gotta find a way to take over the map. Okay, so I'm gonna summon the eagles. He firebolt my knights. There is no damage he can actually get against my eagles and Saruman has been killed Lourdes will die too there is no chance Lourdes can survive this boom Lourdes is dead and again it's a long revive time Lourdes level is level 9 so he will also wait 2 minutes and 30 seconds to get Lourdes back in the business and, and look the money from Isengard all of a sudden he can't even afford to get his I mean he can barely afford to get his Saruman back in the business that's how poor he is I was also able to use the EOD to defend this outpost so now, as you can see, you need to do multiple things simultaneously in order to achieve something in these games. And that's what we are trying to do. We are trying to push with our army, we are trying to defend with our power points, and using the second army, the knights, to get map control. Because not only we are getting wealthier and can afford to revive Gandalf, can afford to make more army, but most importantly, we are also able to deny, deny our opponent money. And he will kind of be poor, he can't afford to make five Uruk pits anymore and three war pits and still maintain to revive his heroes like Lourdes and Saruman. All, all is a part of the plan, boys. I mean, the only thing about this map is I don't like the brightness of this map, but I think it's it's kind of like a like a special map. You know, it looks odd, but it's it's not something bad. Okay, his combos here. I've still level ten Archer, but he has freezing rain. Which can again shut me down completely. He is about to revive his lords, but not his Saruman. Because he needs to upgrade those units, which of course will take him also lots of money. I'm trying to destroy this outpost here. But he will have the Uruk pit level 2 very soon. And that's going to give him a chance to recruit some pikemen. He's going to use rain, which of course is a great thing. I'm going for a juicy trample into the back line. That's a beautiful trample. Dealt hella damage. And Isengard is all of a sudden really, really poor. Without being able to revive his Saruman. He went even for the Devastation. But it's not enough. Gondor taking over the game now. For the first time ever, actually. I think I was never that far advanced. So we have like... One offensive outpost next to his camp. The Freezing Ring is just hard countering me. That's the problem. He's gonna use Devastation. Which might give him the money almost to get his Saruman, but nope, that's not gonna be the case. So I know what I need to do, right? I know he can't bring from this location reinforcement to this region. So he can have only one or two Uruk pits here, which, you know, I can kind of play around this. So if I have an Archer range here and double stable here, right? So I'm, I'm, I know what I need to do. I, I know I need to destroy this outpost with my knights, and my army will keep him kind of in a check situation. 
Unfortunately, while I'm speaking, Lourdes was able to kill our Faramir. So Faramir, I mean, I couldn't be more proud of you, Faramir. Like, let's be real, guys. I think Faramir has been showing incredible quality in this game. And with the warning arrow sniping of the heroes, with the leadership he was able to provide all the time, leveling up with the captain of Gondor, all the rangers and combos to a high level, was an incredible performance from Faramir. Denethor would be proud, my friend. And yeah, I have finally 4k plus. I think that's the first time I get to see that high numbers in the past 15 minutes in the game. My combos have still no leadership available, but I'm trying to kind of keep him checked. I want to destroy this level 3 furnaces, make him kind of poor. But he has still a decent amount of map, right? So he's trying also right now with the war guys to actually kind of reclaim map control a bit. Because he also realizing, oh damn, I'm not that rich. I'm not that wealthy. I need to think about think what I can do better. Again, you need to learn as you are doing, right? Learning by doing. That's why I'm always saying, never give up on map control, never. Even when you have like 50,000. Because the longer the game goes on, the more chances you have to get low on resources again. Because what is, like, think about this. You have like 2 millions in the bank, but you spend so much money, more money in a month than you earn. So what will happen eventually is you will run out of money. It might take you maybe 3 years, but it's gonna happen. That's what happened to Isengard. He was so rich, but what happened is he was giving out too much more money than he was getting in a minute. So spending more in a minute than he was gaining in a minute, which kind of results you be too poor <laughs> in, in long run, you know? <laughs> okay. Excuse me when I'm blabbering too much, but it's like like 3 a.m. In, <laughs> in the night, and I'm, you know... Ooh! <laughs> it's 3 a.m. in the night that I'm doing this commentary, so hopefully it's still enjoyable for you guys. And by the way, if it is enjoyable, if you guys enjoy this kind of videos on this channel, don't forget to leave a like. It takes you only a few seconds, but helps me a ton. Boromir has been crippled. Deja vu from the films, boys. Boom, but it's an honor. Bar Boromir, Boromir, also known as uh, Stark, <laughs> Ned Stark, it's an honor from, you know, when you die from the sword of the Balrog. I'm gonna use Cloudbreak to stun the Swarks. When you don't know, the Cloudbreak also gives you uh, armor penetration, pretty much, right? It gives you the chance to lower the enemy armor by 30%, and that makes you deal 30% more damage to them. It's like a buff too, like a debuff and a buff, because every time you debuff the enemy units, it kind of indirectly buffs your units too. So you reducing their armor makes you deal more damage to them. You reducing their damage makes you be more tanky against them, right? does not have to always be you getting buffed but also enemy being debuffed can be very very nice okay so my Ganoff is back almost back actually that's very very good for me he was kind of wasting his Balrog uh, and I was still able to hold this outpost which is very really amazing it's a really long game but I decided to not give up okay I play until the very end so I'm coming I know he has one pikeman so I'm bringing my combo my archer level 5 to kill his pikeman so I will be now able to destroy this outpost and take it over. Ganoff is back in the business. Farami is almost back in the business too. So I'm going to make an archer range. My eagles are chilling, but I know I can't achieve too much. There is going to be level, multiple level 3 furnaces. Shoot at me non-stop. Okay, my... I like, at this point, it's about spamming units, right? It's all about spamming, making sure that you have the map. And as you can see at the bottom right side of your screen, we have a decent map control. Indeed, Isengard is kind of poor. Right? He has like no money at all. <laughs> like he's very, very poor. Yeah, he will be able to revive his Lords and Saruman, but he has still more than 250 available command points which he needs to fill. And he can't afford to do this with this low eco. So he's about to lose the last remaining outpost too, due to the Gondor Knights. One of them is being level 7, by the way. And he's trying. He's trying hard. He's throwing his last, one of the last remaining settlements, he has one more, level 3. The problem with the lumber mills is, the longer the game goes on, the less trees will be around the lumber mills, and the more wars the lumber mill is going to be, compared to a slaughterhouse. So, when you realize that, that you need to walk like a long distance to harvest resources, then it's time to demolish this and replace it with a slaughterhouse. Would be a better choice, you know? Okay. So now... For the first time in this game, we have whole outpost control. All four of them. Amazing. Ganav and Faramir, side by side, level 10. Level 10. 
Dude, this was an incredible game. Incredible game. Out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. You were like, what can we do? Let's play a free for all on this map. Out of nowhere, this map, this game, turned to be an incredible game. We love Saruman. He's gonna level them up also. After healing them. I don't know why he healed them. Maybe he misclicked. Maybe he wanted to do this, but he misclicked on this one. But I'm gonna just summon EOD because I know he has Padrock on cooldown. I'm gonna just go with the Ganaf to e study this dude. Finish him off. He crippled my Ganaf, but there is no follow up. There is nothing that can kill my Ganaf at this point. And all I gotta do is commit, commit, commit. I want you to look, take a look into the minimap. Okay? I want you to take a look into the minimap now. And if you are watching this over at YouTube, of course, go back like 15 minutes ago in this video and take a look into the minimap back in the, back 15 minutes ago. You know, and that hopefully should be a proof that you should never give up. Like when you have the will to win, commit to that. If you lose, you lose, but don't lose by giving up. You know, lose when you when you when every single one of your structures has been destroyed. I'm saying that, but I'm also quitting sometimes. But sometimes I'm also feeling the the need of committing and playing until the very end. And that's gonna be the end of this game. Farah has been defeated, but phenomenal game. GG well played. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, don't forget to leave a like to this video, subscribe for more videos like this in the future. I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep hitting like a track, and as always, ladies and gentlemen, stay beyond standards. Peace out.